legacy in Islamic uh, Andalusia. And today we have a special guest because both of them will tell us about the actual condition about their experience in uh, Islamic community, especially in Andalusia or in Spain. Um, before we start, maybe we can uh, together saying Basmalah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, and then I will go to Brother Indar Surahmat to open our meeting with Quran recitation uh, to Brother Indar. Please welcome. Okay, uh, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Laqad kana li sabain fi maskanihim ayah Jannatani ayyamini wa shimal Kulu min rizaki rabbikum wa shkuru lah Baldatun tayyibatun wa rabbun ghafur Fa'aradu fa'arasalna alayhim sayla al-arimi wa baddalnahum وَبَدَّلْنَاكُمْ بِجَنَّتَيْهِمْ جَنَّتَيْنِ ذَوَاتَيْ أُكُلٍ خَمْتٍ وَأَسَلٍ وَشَيْءٍ وشيء مِّنْ سِدَرٍ قَلِيلٍ ذَلِكَ جَزَيْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَفَرُوا وَهَلْ نُجَازِي إِلَّا الْكَفُورِ وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ الْقُرَى الَّتِي بَارَكَنَا فِيهَا قُرَى ظَاهِرَةً وَقَدَّرْنَا فِيهَا السَّيْرِ Siru fiha layaliya wa ayyaman aminin Faqalu rabbana ba'id bayna asfarina Wa dhalamu anfusahum Fajalnahum فَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَحَادِيثَ وَمَزَّقْنَاهُمْ كُلَّ مُمَزَّقَ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ وَلَقَدْ صَدَّقَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِبْلِيسُ ظَنَّهُ فَتَّقَ تبعوه إلا فريقا من المؤمنين وما كان له عليهم من سلطان إلا لنعلم من يؤمن بالآخرة إلا لنعلم من يؤمن بالآخرة ممن هو منها في شك وربك على كل شيء حفيظ صدق الله العظيم Uh, thank you, Brother Inda, for the Quran recitation. And the next agenda will be a welcoming speech delivered by Sister Diyah Nahdiati. She is the chairwoman of Muhammadiyah, Germany. Please, uh, for Sister Diyah, I miss yours. Thank you, Mr. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ashadullah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin Wa ala alihi wa sallihi ajma'in amma'u um, First, our honor speakers here Mr. 
for Brother Ibrahim Hernandez. Um, as a chairman of Civil Mosque uh, Foundation, um, and Bapa Ibrahim uh, Khalilul Rahman, if I'm not uh, correct, please uh, uh, correct me. Uh, he's a AU Commission researcher and to, used to live in Spain in uh, 2013 until 2016. And uh, dear our Ustad, um, especially during Ramadan, is our Ustad is Ustad Rizal Nur Hakim, is uh, uh, now in Morocco study PhD about uh, Islamic uh, uh, thinking and culture, and also including Islamic history in Andalusia. So that's why we learn lots uh, since uh, the beginning of Ramadan about uh, Andalusia and Islam uh, in in Spain in Spain. And near all the talk, uh, the talk show or seminar participation, which I cannot mention so, uh, one by one. Um, thanks to you, to, to each and every one of you for being here today at this um, wonderful afternoon uh, on the 28th uh, days of Ramadan. It's a such high an honor for me to speak on behalf of uh, PTM Germany as a presenter of international uh, special events organization below Hamadiyya Center Board in Indonesia. Um, just want a short to inform that in German is our name in Germany uh, as Mohammadiyah Deutschland e.V. because um, in uh, German has been since uh, July 2021 already official as a non-profit organization and registered by local court uh, in Frankfurt. Let me begin by giving you a warm welcome to a Ramadan talk show and the Islamic civilization in Andalusia. Before we get started, I would like to express my appreciation to all speakers and a special thanks to Madam Ambassador Yuli Mubuni. Hopefully she's already there or if not there, but I, we are thanks to the Swiss. Thanks for to my, Madam uh, Ambassador Yuli Mubuni, who generously helped us to make uh, this seminar come through. And the rest, of course, the, but the best, thanks to beloved um, members of Muhammadiyah Germany, especially uh, the Dahwa Committee and also uh, um, Median Information uh, Committee, and special to our treasurer, Yossi Aulia. We could not have done it without all of you. Thank you. In today's seminars, of course, uh, uh, we will learn about Islamic civilization in Andalusia to gain a comprehensive understanding from story to actual condition as a building strategy, I think. And the Islamic civilization gain a comprehensive understanding from history to actual condition is like identity or personality that plays a very important role to build an Islamic peaceful environment be successful. I hope that this seminar or uh, talk show will help us build the same perception on Islam civilization in the wide range context in Europe. I'm sure that today will be fun and exciting or of course full of learning. And I hope this that this event will help us to grow ourselves as part Muslim community for Ramadan Lil Alamin. That's all for me. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk longer because uh, usually I speak in German because I live in Germany since uh, 16 years and I have to make it a little bit uh, uh, this opening speech, otherwise I cannot speak uh, really. And for any shortcoming, please accept my sincere apologies. Nasrumin Allahi wa fatum qarib wa bashil al mu'minin wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Sister Dia, for the welcoming speech. And now uh, we are coming to our main uh, agenda. It's a talk show and sharing session with Brother Luis Herna uh, Ibrahim Hernandez Martinez and Brother Ibrahim, uh, Mas Ibrahim Halilur Rahman. So we have three Ibrahim right now. The Indonesian one is Mas Ibrahim. And the Spanish one is Brother Ibrahim. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Mas Ibrahim and Brother Ibrahim Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Mbak Yusi Yeah, so uh, I will introduce a little bit, a little bit. Um, Brother Ibrahim is a board of director of CIE uh, Islamic Community in Spain and also a chairman of Seville Most Foundation uh, He has life experience as Spanish Muslim, as the second generation of Spanish Muslim, and he lives in uh, Seville, part of Andalusia uh, region. So it will be special for us to know the actual and original story uh, about how Andalusia nowadays. And the second one, Mas Ibrahim Halil Rahman, He is Indonesian, but he has various uh, experience, especially in uh, living as Islamic community in Seville, because he used to live there for about three, uh, four years in Seville as yes. a, a European Commission researcher. So it will be very uh, interesting for us to have this kind of talk show. Uh, I will go first to Brother Ibrahim. Brother Ibrahim, Assalamualaikum. I hope you're healthy. Waalaikumsalam oh. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, I'm very well. Thank you. Well. Alhamdulillah. Um, I would like to ask you, because I think this is a common <coughs> question for all of us. What is now the condition of Islamic community in Spain, in Andalusia, or in Seville, in the eyes of you, in your opinion? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for for inviting me. Uh, it's it's really an honor for me to be here. And uh, mashallah, see uh, Pa Ibrahim in front of me, uh, make me really happy. Uh, and all of you, of course. Uh, I, I do really miss uh, Ibu Julia. I was really hoping to see her here because she's. Uh, A very special person for us in in the community of Seville and and through her time in Spain. Uh, so I hope I really hope that she she can solve her, the problem. Um, and uh, hopefully um, um, uh, she will come with us a little bit later. But uh, Alhamdulillah, it uh, it really is wonderful to to be here and uh, you've you've made me feel. Uh, connected to a beloved country of Indonesia, uh, who's, who's been uh, a huge part of, of this community in, in Seville uh, over the past years. And, uh, and we haven't, unfortunately, been able to, to follow up or to, to visit your, your country for a while. But uh, it's always been a country that has hosted us tremendously well, uh, that has helped us tremendously through the various campaigns that we had with different artists and, and by being there and, and people have really gone out of the way to to help us with with the project of the mosque and Islamic Cultural Center and our CAF of Seville and uh, we, re we really really do feel very very uh, connected to Indonesia and uh, and of course this connection comes uh, first and foremost uh, through uh, Pa Ibrahim who is present here is my elder brother uh, from Indonesia and uh, He, he. I mean, he will tell uh, his story, no. But, uh, but uh, I think he heard that we were traveling to Malaysia, and then he, he had. If I'm not mistaken, he'd gone to on Hajj or Umrah with uh, Ibu Juli and Budi, the Hajj, former Hajj. ambassadors. Hajj, Hajj, yes, Hajj Ibrahim, and uh, and so he connected us with her, and and then everything just opened up from the uh, tremendously. So. Um, Just to give a little bit of uh, background of our connection with uh, Indonesia, uh, Ibu Julian Puni also organized us for us to go to to several uh, Muhammadiyya universities in uh, Yogyakarta, which was a delightful, incredible experience for us to to be able to be there and and to meet the people and to learn from the people. Uh, it really has been uh, tremendous, and inshallah, is something that uh, again to to follow up and that uh, this connection will. Uh, strengthen uh, in the years to come, inshallah. Uh, I have seen, uh, and I haven't actually spoken about this with uh, Pa Ibrahim, but I think he is aware that since we started um, with this whole project and, and creating awareness about uh, the Muslims in, in Andalusia and in Spain, and in particular in Seville, uh, 
Um, we have done, like I said, many campaigns and uh, even documentaries have come through it and uh, even TV series, uh, drama series have been done about uh, our existence, which really humbles us because we are a very, very small community uh, compared to, to what uh, big organizations like Nahdalat uh, Ulama or Muhammadiyah or Muslim countries have. But uh, the, the increase in, uh, in visitors that we have had from Indonesia, from Malaysia to Spain uh, over the past few years has been tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. Uh, and the interest risen by by this has been incredible. And, uh, and it is really wonderful because we receive groups of uh, Indonesians and Malaysians uh, all the time at the at the mosque. And it's really wonderful to see them just around the street, where, whereas Ibrahim is, is witness to this. Uh, to this. Um, uh, maybe... Uh, seven, eight years ago, it was very rare to see uh, not that many people came to as, as tourists to Spain. Now it's like groups of the groups of the groups. So, alhamdulillah, the connection is strengthened, and I hope this this will go to to more to more. Um, please do um, call on my attention if I go completely off topic. Uh, I do have what we call Ramadan brain, <laughs> and uh, like I explained the first. Um, organizers uh, we we celebrated uh, uh the 27th night last night so i haven't had much sleep so please do feel uh, free to stop me at any time and correct me uh, my apologies in advance <laughs> um so alhamdulillah um the the islamic community in uh, in i'm really happy by the way really really happy to an honor to be here because i think it's very important to to highlight uh not only the beautiful past of uh, uh, Al-Andalus, uh, which is incredibly important uh, to, to understand and to, 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 to know about it, but to connect it with the, with the present, I think is, is, uh, it honors you because it is very important. A lot of people tend to study uh, or have this kind of vision, romantic vision of Al-Andalus and completely neglect the Muslims that live here today. And, uh, I think both are as important. Uh, I would not say one is more important than the other, but to understand and to read and to know about the beautiful story of Al-Andalus uh, uh, and the legacy, which you can see right behind uh, Pa Ibrahim uh, with the Alhambra Palace as one of the beautiful examples, uh, which is one of the most visited monuments uh, in Spain. Uh, it is beautiful, but at the same time to, to learn and to understand the uh, the local uh, current Muslim community in Spain, it's it's really uh, wonderful and, and uh, like I said, it honors you to to highlight this and to 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 take care of uh, of learning about this as well. Okay. Um, if if I was to uh, to start, I would say uh, in the light late nineteen until the late nineteen seventies. There was basically no Muslims in Spain at all, so uh, one would have to make. Uh, um, there is no connection or, or no straight line between the Muslims in Spain of Al-Andalus and the Muslims in Spain today. So there was, uh, as you know, and, and you've probably studied, uh, when the um, Catholic kings conquered the Spain. Um, and there was a time where Muslims were allowed to, to live in Spain, but then, uh, I, I can't remember the dates, I'm not a historian, but at a certain point, the Inquisition came. And then every single Muslim in Spain was either forced to convert to Christianity or uh, thrown away from the country. So from that moment, I'm sure many people, uh, as it is stated in the Dean, uh, kept the faith in their heart, and uh, even though uh, outwardly they, they did not um, follow the, the 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 outwardness of of Muslims and praying in public and stuff, but um, they but they could not uh, obviously not transmit it to the kids. So basically, from from there has been a huge gap of maybe three uh, three four hundred years of no Muslims uh, or no uh, uh, a distinct line of Islam in Spain. Uh, it is also true that many of the things in terms of the culture, um, architecture, uh, food, language, 
uh, are embedded and it's very very present in a not only in our DNA in our blood but also in the language in many many things uh, al andalus is very much uh, present nowadays and, and not only locally but i think internationally through the various and different things that were uh, discovered or studied or uh, researched uh, uh, during the time of al andalus but like i said there's no connection between the muslims then and the muslims today which is i think uh, one of the greatest misperceptions that people have in the light, late 1970s there was until the late 1970s uh, in the last um, kind of era of the dictatorship in spain the only um, um religion that was officially uh, allowed was uh, catholicism so it is only after the death of uh, the dictator franco that uh, democracy came into spain and uh, and there was a i like to always say a sort of a, a spiritual uh, revolution where people were allowed to search and to look for answers in different places and uh, and they uh, many people found uh, found uh, an answer through islam like my parents like many many people in the late 1970s 90, uh, early the 1980s it was in fact through Uh, at the very, 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 very beginning, which obviously it later kind of expanded and exploded, but at the very, very uh, early beginnings, it can be traced to actually three men who were traveling in London and met with this man called Sheikh Abdul Qadir Sufi, rahimahullah, who passed away. And through him, they uh, they discovered Islam. They were literally walking in the street and they heard uh, these people singing and they came in, and they but they were already in that search and they had gone through Buddhism, Hinduism, they had gone through all until they found Islam, but they were on that search. And uh, I think it's important to understand that a lot of people in in Spain at that time, they were uh, they they were really living under dictatorship, so very very much oppressed. And then suddenly they had the option to to look for answers and and for a meaning in life. Um, and Alhamdulillah, this uh, these people found it uh, through Islam. And uh, and it slowly started to expand. Obviously, this also happened at the same time as um, um, primarily students, uh, medicine students from uh, Syria and Palestine that were coming to to Spain to start uh, to study medicine, and uh, and some of them based themselves here, started the families here, and and then immigration started coming in. Um, and I think this is like a, a, a very kind of short summary of um, uh, until kind of our current situation. I don't want to extend it too much. Uh, I don't know if there's any any particular uh, if I'm going too too much off topic, and you can uh, bring me back on the rails. Thank you, thank you, brother. But my question is already well answered. If I can uh, conclude a little bit, it's like. The, re- the history repeating itself, so after the dictatorship, the fear, the big fear of the people to search for another option or, yeah, to search for the light of the life. And after the dictatorship is broken, uh, then they have this opportunity to turn out the, the light of the life. I mean, they start to finding Islam and they start to have courage, big, very, very big courage, yeah, Compa- comparing to... I don't know, maybe in Indonesia, do you have um, another experience, uh, Mas Ibrahim? Uh, you are still mute. Yes, yeah. um, Mbak Yossi. Um, right, so so uh, should uh, can I share my, my slides or... Um, yes, yes, this time you can yeah. share your slides, please. Yeah. Okay, this time I can share, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's always it's always enjoyable to listen to, I, I call him Amir as the leader in civil uh, Muslim community. Uh, even though I'm no longer civilians, uh, but I still look up to him as uh, as the leader and as somebody who kind of, who has traded all of his life for, for the fight and for the, for the, for the uh, you know, envision to be a uh, uh, you know, successful community in Spain. So let me start my, my slide presentation. Um, um, sorry, technical problem. 
here. Can you see my screen? Oh, you see, can you see my screen? Okay. Very well. So, yes. so yeah, I want I want to contemplate a bit on based on my uh, experience, my my uh, short time of experience when I had chance to engage with uh, Amir Ibrahim and all uh, civilian community and in somehow in some way I've I've had chance to talk with um, other Muslim community in Granada, which is still kind of brother and sister with the community in Seville. So and and I want to you know um, contemplate on what went what what can we learn from the current Spanish Muslim society. So um, just a bit of myself, I've been quite fortunate to have opportunity to visit many countries. Um, before this uh, occasion, I I uh, randomly just count how many countries I actually have visited, uh, and it was like probably what 40, 45 maybe. And uh, among 45, my time in Seville is certainly the best, the best period of, of my experience of visiting many, many countries. And my mom always taught me, uh, whenever you are in new places, you have to spend first and foremost to visit the mosque. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. When I was in Sweden, when I was visiting uh, US, even in Hawaii, in Mauritius, in Kenya, and wherever I had chance to visit, the first place I try to visit is the mosque. And while all mosques have their own uh, characteristic, um, they have uh, their own uh, you know, um, story and struggle and fights, um, the mosque in Seville, the current mosque in Seville, the, the beloved mosque in Seville is something different in nature and in spirit and in anything that 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 is uh, entitling yeah with the, with the, with the, with their existence so first of all i'm i'm i've i'm feel i feel so humbled to 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 be able to share uh, as uh nahdian myself yeah it is uh, it is of of course very humbling opportunity to share with uh, uh my fellow uh, muslim from Muhammadiyah, because I think it's it's the time for us to collaborate. There are many things we can work on together. Um, and in Nahdien, uh, we have this uh, credo, Al-Muhafadu al-Qadimi Soli, wal aqdu bil jadidul aslah, which is, when I reflect on this statement or this motto, it's very much uh, uh, resembling uh, our brother and sisters in, in Spain, that they want to keep the faith of Muslim, but with some adjustment, with some, you know, uh, some way yeah, to to moderate and to to be able to um, uh, you know, to engage with the with the, with the society where they are, because like Brother Ibrahim, I think he still have he still has relatives who are still in uh, Catholicism or many others uh, brother and sister Muslim brother and sisters there that they have to be interacting. And that's that's the way uh, Islam, Spanish Muslim community is a bit different in the way they look himself and the way they, you know, interact with other uh, Muslim society and other uh, other faith uh, uh, which are surrounding their, their their daily lives. Is it easy? Of course not. Yeah. Uh, in my in my uh, lens, uh, uh, Amir, uh, it's it's not easy. It's not. It's certainly not easy to be a Muslim in Spain and and. Um, uh, but of course, uh, in Amal Osri Yusro, behind all problem, yeah, beside beside all problems, there's always solution. There are always easiness, and there are something we have to learn. So, three lingering years from our family's ten years journey to Europe. What are they? Yeah, I'm not going to tell the story, but history because I'm not historian myself. But it is uh, interesting to see the transformation from the older Andalusia, which you know, um, spanning from countries uh, nearby France up to southern part of, of Spain, Granada, Sevilla, Malacca. Um, and then we can see here that the area is uh, becoming uh, smaller and smaller and smaller uh, up until the day when, um, I don't know, Muhammad the fifth or maybe pa pa Arisan will will correct me if I'm wrong. When he handed over the key of Granada back to 
uh, the Queen of Isabella, which, you know, marking the end of the, you know, history of uh, Andalusia, Muslim Andalusia. And this is all the legacies, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we are, we, we still be proud of having Mosqueta de Cordoba. Well, Alcazar is not exactly the legacy of Muslim, but, you know, the idea of putting all the ornament is very much Muslim. Uh, inspiration in, in, inspired by Muslim architecture. Uh, La Giralda used to be mosque, I think, used to be, uh, we call it uh, Masjid Jami in Seville, and they transformed it into one of the largest church in, 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 in Spain. Alhambra is my background, is also the legacy. Uh, I think one of the most visited, uh, uh, one of the most visited building in, in Spain, which is very much inherited from Muslim legacy. Uh, this is the inner. So basically, ninety nine percent. If I talk with many people when I was still there, ninety nine percent of churches used to be mosques, and we can see when we can still see the ornament. You know, wherever we see churches, we can see you know the ceiling, the window, the ornament. It must be, it must be you know coming from Islamic heritage, and it is. Yeah. So how is it now? I think this is our beautiful mosque, yeah, Pa Amir. Um, I have very deep feeling with this building. Um, I think one of, well, if I have to re uh, retrospect on my journey, this is one of the best Ramadan I had, 2014, 2015, 2016. I'm not sure, 16, I, I wasn't there anymore. But when I ask myself, how can that be? Yeah, so so the Ramadan lasts from five, I think, until ten, in the midst of summer. Yeah, summer I mean forty degrees. Yeah, it's well. I was I was in Sweden before. Uh, it, 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 Sweden has a bit longer a duration of fasting, but the ter the the temperature is much uh, friendlier. But Seville is killing us. There is no way. To me, there is no way I can resist to come to this mosque every single day. Every single day. I don't see any rational that allow me to enable me to visit this mosque. Yeah, every single day and come back home at 2 p.m. in the morning. And then tomorrow morning I have to come to the office, 8 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. And I felt like, you know, I'm I'm the superman. I don't feel any problem. Like, you know, I'm I'm the healthiest person in the world. Why? Because of Ahmed Ibrahim and all friends there who inspired me that, you know, you are so lucky to be able to, to, to you know, to witness yeah, all the community that inspire you, that, that force you to be a better person. So that's, that's very much what I get uh, from them. So this is just statistics where Spain is uh, currently and uh, the number of population. Uh, Muslim estimated about 1.1, but Amir uh, Ibrahim has, I think, found three point something. Uh, I don't know, but it is quite many now. I think it's, it's emerging, it's growing, yeah. And uh, with the with the support of uh, native Spanish, it is easier for them. To me, it's easier compared to you know Muslim in the in Netherlands, Muslim in Sweden, who mostly coming from immigrants. Well, in Spain there are also a big proportion of immigrants, but the fact that the native Spanish are, you know, converting to Islam. Yeah, second, third generation now. I think the 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 assimilation towards uh, greater society of Spain is easier than those of other uh, Muslim in other European countries. So, yeah, this is what I enjoy a lot. Yeah, when you meet new friends, uh, you know, I, I maybe I cannot stop my tears when I look at this picture. Uh, some of them, maybe uh, Amir Ibrahim can, can correct me, some of them, they don't read hijaya. I know. Some of them, they don't read hijaya. But they can memorize everything we read yeah, from first page until 10 page, until 100 pages. So they, they, they read it from, from uh, I think from Latin or from, not translation, tapi me, me, membahasa Spanyol kan bahasa Arab. Yeah. And when, Spanish when version. Look, Spanish version. When when you look when you look at them, you feel like, wow, yeah. And they dedicate them, themselves to do to do 
all the the zikir. Yeah. When I'm I'm talking zikir, it can last until two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Like they don't have any any fatigue. Yeah. And when you are there, you are you are um you know you are you are born Muslim, and you interact with them, and you feel not ashamed with yourself. It's not possible, and you will push yourself to be as good as them. At least that that applies to me. When you look at right and left, and then uh, in front of you, behind you, everybody is reciting the wirid, the Quran. Then there is something. Well, if they can do this, of course you you are growing Muslim. You you, you are you know uh, you you were born in Muslim society in Indonesia. You can do the same too. Even to for, for me, it was it was spiritual journey. It is absolutely amazing to be to be with them. Yeah. And this is the, the second generation. What do they have, they have in common? One thing. They are all handsome and beautiful. Yeah. They are all handsome and beautiful. No doubt. Yeah. So so the charisma is there. And the you know the the well the, the inner beauty is different to all other bule you find in Germany. Wait, or wait, in, in... Uh, Mas Ibrahim, can I catch you? This is brother Ibrahim. Yes, of course. He is. <laughs> okay. He, and he is still as as you know as Killing as as now, but he is very humble. Yeah, uh, I, there will be one more slide uh, after this. Uh, I I know that I'll I'll make him uh, blushing, but that's my intention to do that. So so this is him. Yeah, when when he was uh, I think two years uh, younger than now, he was everywhere, and he traded everything. He traded everything uh, from from his, from his life for this most. So, so you imagine yourself if you are as as good as him, and somebody calling you up, Ibrahim, can you please help us to build the mosque? What mosque? Uh, even myself, I, I wouldn't think that when you are in the peak of your career, I don't think you will have the ability to to think twice to, you know, to 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 shift hundred eighty percent, hundred eighty degrees, yeah, to come back to totally different avenue, but it is possible with him. It's possible with uh, some friends that we encounter there. So the spiritual journey is very inspiring. You know, I mean, it's all about, you know, leaving money for, for everything. Yeah, here he's res responsible for A to Z in the most. I know exactly what he is doing when I was there. Yeah, so, so this is truly inspiration for us. And Mualaf in Seville, um, when I was there, it's like, Every week, I think, yeah. Friday during Juma prayer. Saturday, no, but Sunday uh, after the the Quran, there is always new Muslim. So while well, we are still struggling to find out the future of ourselves after this world, Amr Ibrahim has attracting Muslim. I don't know how many, you know, how many paradise, paradise, how many paradise, how many. How many kingdoms Allah has provided him in Jannah? Because every single week there is new Muslim there under uh, Amir Ibrahim. So I think could be in in my experience the maximum was I think three or four or five. Yeah, Friday and then Sunday. You know, it is very easy to to get and to witness new Muslim converting, and most of them are Spanish uh, native Spanish. So, and this is also one one. Uh, Brother, I met them. I met there. Yeah, I think he's handicapped. 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 Yeah. Um, so he, uh, pakai crook. Yeah, because uh, lupu. Yeah. Uh, okay. But uh, when I, I was there, when I was there, he never missed the travel. And he was living. I don't know how many kilometers from the mosque. How many kilometers from the mosque? And he spent, you know, um, every single day to do travel. And that's that's the reason. You know, they're, they're at, the, at a different level, basically different level. You, you have to admit that they are, they're at a different level. And this is the ladies as well. The ladies are doing very, very well, I think, compared to the other picture in many Muslim women, you know, that they are associated with oppression, with, you know, whatever. They have some community that have established themselves as um, good uh, Muslim society. And the lady here, uh, the red hand, upper red hand, is uh, Amir Ibrahim's wife. So one of the nicest lady I've ever met in Seville as well. 
So this is uh, the lady, and this lady is Amir Ibrahim mom. So basically, it's mom, wife, auntie, and sister, and everybody is is fighting. Everybody is, you know, struggling. Everybody is, um, you know, trying to 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 be inspiration from others. That's probably what I can see. And this is the youngsters. I think they are growing up. Uh, I don't know. They're, they're maybe already 30 years maybe now. I, I don't know. It was almost 10 years ago. So some of them are already married, family. And and yeah, they're all good generation, I think. Uh, yeah, this is second generation. Uh, most of them, I don't know, maybe about 30%, 40%. Are sent to memorize Quran, so some of them are are able to memorize thirty, some of them fifteen. But that that's something, you know, um, full of inspiration. I think, yeah, for 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 a country who are uh, just entering the second or third generation of Muslim, but the faith and uh, uh, just unparalleled. I think. So, this is what also something quite memorable. Yeah. For us to do, uh, for us to do um, slaughtering kurban, it's just business as usual, right? Bener gak? Jadi buat orang Indonesia kurban ya kurban aja gitu ya. But not in Seville. Different perspective in Europe, ya. Yeah. Different perspective in Europe because you have to go through all the way in remote area. I don't remember where. Yeah, I don't think it was still Seville, somewhere in the in the middle of the jungle because we don't want to be kind of detected and security and image and stuff and stuff it's it's not easy uh to work on it to work on something that we used to see this as you know um take it for granted yeah everything is is full of struggle and and effort to be able to perform good things yeah 55 degree is not easy my friend um uh and this is what we always enjoy i don't know um uh, after about 20, 18 hours of fasting and under the sefila heat, it was so delicious to enjoy this kind of meal. Yeah, it is different. Yeah, with the, uh, uh, it's not as luxurious probably as as the meal in in Jakarta. I think in in some hotels or some bookber in Jakarta. But trust me, it's just a, the delicious del, the delicacy is something different. You never felt that, and then that's something. You know, I, I remember from interacting with them. So, um, and what is the what is the what is the the glue? Yeah, apa yang menjadi lemnya menurut saya? I think the glue is that they found Muslim, they found Islam through tasawuf, and it helps a lot. Yeah, to distinguish them with other Muslim community community in other Europe. Karena yang lain mungkin ngertinya itu karena pernikahan karena apa gitu ya but the four muslim predominantly if not all from tasawuf and this is okay. something that the beauty that. of spirit yeah beauty the beauty of the spirit is, is mm -hmm. different yeah this is the zikir this i missed the zikir i think uh last time i did zikir was i don't know 10 years ago and when when you do zikir it's it's different it's different feeling it's you know you spend the whole night the whole night with them and you can you know you feel like your heart is connected one to, to the other you feel like you can feel what they felt and they can feel what what i feel and that that's something very very expensive that's that's the the most beautiful thing probably of i i had uh, when i interact with them so so this is the summary of my three years i i i've been invited to write in in that newspaper i don't know if it is still exists now and then, of course, I, I managed to write because I think it's too bad that if I don't have chance to write it, I just write it up. And this book has been published by Gramedia. It's quite, uh, quite good in, in reception. Uh, and we still have some copies for anyone interested with, uh, with our experience uh, living with uh, Amir Ibrahim and friends. So in summary, two things you have to do. When you are in... Germany or in Europe. First, you have to do or you register for Hajj because otherwise it is very, very, very long. Visit Sevilla, Granada and meet Amr Ibrahim in Sevilla. That must for you. 
Oh, that's okay. must for you. No, no, I'm yeah. not joking. That's must for you. If you are in Europe, you visit several is a must because then okay. you can see different atmosphere, different type of Muslim that can influence your spiritual journey. Very so well. that is pretty much all from me. Wabu mafik bila kami turik. Wabu assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back to Mbak Yosi. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Mas Ibrahim. So the rule of thumb is when you're living, when you're Muslim and living in Europe, first thing first is going Hajj, and the second is going to the Sefil and meet Brother Ibrahim. Very oh, well. That's that's the key. <laughs> I visited Granada two times, but I didn't know there is Brother Ibrahim exists in Andalusia. So this time, the next time I will visit uh, Granada and visit Brother Ibrahim, inshallah. Which is visiting, which visiting Granada without meeting Brother Ibrahim is not visiting. It's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I should uh, I should redo that. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mas Ibrahim. If I could conclude a little bit from your presentation, the true power of Spanish Muslim is the big, 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 tremendous courage in their heart. It's like a fire in, in, in their soul to, to keep going, to keep moving, to keep doing something, make Islam is becoming blooming in Europe. This is not what we see from other Islamic community. So I will come back to Brother Ibrahim. What do you think? Brother Ibrahim, maybe. What do you think? Do, do I conclude right? And what do you think is a good point of Indonesian Islamic community? I, I think, uh, Every culture, every community has its own power, has its own strength and weakness. So let's focus on the strength. What is the strength of the Indonesian Islamic community? What do you think? Well, alhamdulillah, uh, it's, it's really difficult to keep my tears by while listening to Pa Ibrahim. Uh, it's very humbling indeed to, to listen to his stories and uh, mashallah, it's really wonderful. It brought back really wonderful memories from uh, his time here. Um, mashallah, uh, it is really wonderful. Um, uh, I was he was he was talking about the shahadas, and uh, uh, I was born Muslim, so even for me, it's uh, still uh, extraordinary when you see people coming to Islam, uh, uh, especially with the misperception that people have of Islam and. Uh, major uh, news that you get about Islam in the media, in social media, uh, and you see people thriving to Islam, is it really extraordinary. I'll tell you a, a very short story. Uh, there was a really horrible incident in Spain where someone went uh, absolutely crazy and uh, he was completely out of his head. And, but he, he committed a horrible crime in Algeciras, in the south of Spain. And he... He literally actually killed a priest in the in the in the middle of in in the church. Uh, this was about a year ago or something. Uh, and uh, and obviously when when all, of, when all of these things happen, all of the Muslims get on the spot uh, and get kind of pointed at as as terrorists and, and calling to this, which is completely wrong. And we we try to make a huge effort to kind of uh, distance ourselves from these. Uh, horrible acts that have absolutely nothing to do with with the deen of islam right but but it is very difficult to to try and, uh, and work towards something positive uh, while at the same time telling people that you are not this which which uh, this image that people are trying to portray of islam but uh, but in this story uh, this thing happened and then the next day morning i had to go to the mosque and uh, and as I was approaching, I was thinking, oh boy, there's going to be uh, like paintings in the walls, or because it's happened before. Um, and when I when I approached, there was a, a man waiting at the door, and he was quite a, quite a big man. I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't want to travel or anything. So um, I went straight to the door to try and open, and he uh, he said, uh, "Can I talk to you?" And I said, "Yes, what do you want?" And I was a, li a little bit defensive, and he said. Um, I want to become Muslim, and I was like, uh, my my first reaction was, uh, "Have you not seen the news?" And he said, "Yes, but that's got nothing to do with Islam." So you see the the beauty of it, of 
being told by uh, other people who are not Muslims that uh, these horrible things that are happening have nothing to do with Islam. It was for me a reminder. And only um, in March, uh, this uh, this past March, we had uh, we were blessed with eight shahadas. And these are people that uh, some of them have taken the shahadas just before Ramadan, some of them uh, during Ramadan. And these are people that will have to fast the first Ramadan, which is obviously not easy to become Muslim in Ramadan because you you already taken a responsibility to to fast. And uh, it's, uh, like by Ibrahim saying, it's, it's not that hot now. The days are not that long, but it's still quite long. Uh, so Alhamdulillah. But, uh, but if I was to to answer to your question, sorry, uh, if I was to highlight something that um, from my experience that. I think the whole Ummah could learn about uh, Indonesia and Indonesian Muslims in particular is the uh, something which should be embedded in in the in the DNA of of Islam and the Muslims, which is the courtesy. Uh, it's higher than courtesy; is adab, and and people uh, in Indonesia have it in a natural way, uh, in a natural way, and in an educational way, in adab. Uh, with your parents, adapt with the elders, adapt with the visitors, um, adapt uh, in general with the mosque. Uh, it, it really is extraordinary. You will never find in any other place uh, um, even small details like the way people put the the sandals before the way they go in the mosque, like tied it up. And, uh, no, this it doesn't happen in other places in the world. But the way you greet the elders. The way the kids uh, kiss the hands of the of the uh, old people. So if I was to highlight something that is uh, is a gift that Indonesia has is is that is, uh, is courtesy and uh, and also uh, humbleness. Uh, your my experience from from Indonesia is that is a uh, is a, is a very powerful country and it's uh, in in all sense of the word not only in terms of the dean and the and the um, economy and the growth uh, of of his people and the country but um, but it's certainly uh, something uh, that they uh, they're very humble about it and uh, and I think uh, and I've speak, spoken about this many times with many people and uh, the uh, countries like Indonesia Malaysia they they have a lot to say and a lot to give to the world uh, and uh, and and I find that because you are very humble, as in general, as a country, and in the characters embedded, uh, they they lack the taking the lead in many aspects, or, or standing behind maybe uh, other countries because they are Arab or, or whatever other reasons. But um, I think it's you have a responsibility, and uh, you shouldn't shy away from what Allah has given you, and uh, and. Um, and take the lead because uh, I think Indonesia certainly has a lot to give to the world in terms of the vision that they have of Islam, uh, what you have established. In, and obviously you can criticize anyone and anything in any country. Uh, there's good things that you will find here and there. That's life. But uh, we're talking about the good things that we can highlight. And, uh, and of course, I think uh, they definitely have uh, those two aspects that I will highlight. Thank you so much, Brother Ibrahim. So uh, a message for us, Indonesian Muslim, don't shy away, be confident, something like that, because we have something to offer. Um, before I go to Mas Ibrahim, I have still one question. It, is, it makes me curious uh, because uh, the presentation of Ms. Mas Ibrahim, uh, what does make you shift? from let's say worldly career worldly the peak of everything everything is there in your hand and everyone is uh, chasing the dream that you already had but but you like put them aside and go to the mosque and build a new dream let's say what what is the reason actually maybe you can learn from that Michelle, you know when uh I used to really shy away from from these uh, pictures when uh, Mas Ibrahim and all of these people will bring them forward. 
but uh, now it just makes me laugh because it's it's like really as you can see it's very very long time ago so i i can really say i was i was really literally a kid back then uh uh but yeah there there was a transition like uh i remember the uh the, um someone was giving a class yesterday before iftar and they were speaking about the hijra and how we the hijra obviously we know we all know as the as the journey from mecca to medina from uh, hostility to openness from a place that uh, uh that the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved to a place that allah loved uh, uh, the, and there was a whole transition, and, and uh, but uh, but it's, uh, hijra, I think, is also uh, uh, we're also compelled to understand it as something that we are constantly on. Uh, hijra is something that we are constantly, every 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 day, uh, on the move towards being better, um, better ourselves. And so, in in that regard, I think for me, um, whether more or less consciously, it was a little bit of a hijra in in regards of um, doing something that was uh, more uh, kind of meaningful for me in my life. Uh, and obviously, um, this life uh, is very short, so you have to do, try and do something that is uh, kind of meaningful and uh, and that has a repercussion on, on your hereafter because uh, at the end of the day, you can have uh, as much as you want of dunya, but that's it's never going to be enough and it's not going to take you anywhere uh, in the next life. So you definitely have to work on uh, on the Akhira retirement fund as we as we joke about it. And um, so I think that was that was really uh, what kind of moved uh, us forward. And obviously it was not, uh, when you see those pictures and, and you obviously hear me speaking, you think, that uh, I can't really take all the credit of it because obviously there's a family behind, there's a wife that follows suit and, uh, and you couldn't do something like that without uh, a wife uh, supporting you in that the major move. So Alhamdulillah, it was a really wonderful move for us. Okay, thank you. So in one side, you, are, you do struggle, of course, but in the other mm-hmm. side, you receive a lot of support, family support in this case. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so to Mas Ibrahim, Mas Ibrahim, uh, you already travel around the world, <laughs> like everywhere in the world. Um, what is the the lesson learned as a Muslim that you think this this lesson should be be applied to every Muslim, especially for Indonesian Muslim, because in this in this perspective you have privilege to see the condition of the world to see the different color of the world but not every indonesian muslim have has this kind of privilege or this opportunity but you have this lesson maybe this lesson you can share to us what do you think well i think i think traveling uh, makes you to have wider horizon to look things into perspective you will you will acknowledge things. Um, you will see things in different lenses. Um, you will not take everything for granted. Uh, the easiest uh, distance to the mosque uh, in one time, yeah, jarak ke masjid yang enam puluh meter. Maybe you 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 take it for granted. But when you are in other position, once I was in uh, Gimares, a yeah, small city. After several hours moving to Gimares. And it is even more difficult, Amir, because it took me like two hours to go to the mosque. And um, I, I mean, well, of course, there are some 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 adjustment. Yeah, I mean, uh, you cannot achieve a similar target. And when you were in Sevilla, for instance, yeah, come up, we can perform taraweeh every single day, but moving to to new places without any mosque, without any place to pray. Yeah. Then, then you have to find a way to pray, and then we pray under the trees, uh, because we were rejected to pray in, in front of the church, and then we moved to other place, and then we moved to yoga, yoga, uh, yoga places, and we can pray traveling together with people from Palestine, people from. So I think now, now you realize that uh, being Muslim, especially Muslim in Indonesia, is is a privilege. What what I didn't mention here is that. When our brother and sister in Spain, in Seville, in Andalusia, 
the choose to learn Quran, the choose to learn Quran, then they will miss the opportunity to enter formal education. Yeah, correct me, uh, Brother Ibrahim, if I'm wrong. So basically, in some generation, they are a bit of distancing from formal education. Of course, now I think there are many going to medicine, going to universities, but there are there are some, I think some generation that formal education is in distance because you, you have to choose either you go for formal education or you go for Quran school. And when you choose Quran school, you will descend to Morocco, you will descend to Mallorca, and then you don't have any any chance to, to do what we have uh, habitually in Indonesia. You are going to Madras, going to school in the morning, going to Madrasa in the afternoon, or at night, or in the evening. And you can combine. That's super privilege. That's super privilege that you know uh, we, we we you know our brothers and sisters may not have that chance. Uh, so I think uh, looking into perspective, uh, I, I totally agree with with uh, Ahmed Ibrahim. It is time for Indonesian leaders or Indonesian Muslim leader to not step back, but a bit of moving forward to kind of more influential, yeah, uh, untuk lebih berani dalam uh, major decision making in the world, yeah, because usually Indonesian are a bit left, uh, you know, push back a bit, um, you know. I was I was in uh, Nairobi uh, one time, and I was surrounded by people claiming that they are memorizing Quran, and all of all of them dragged me to the restaurant, and they order food as much as they want, yeah, and I was like, "What do you do to me?" And they really, yeah, jadi mereka tu manfaatkan saya uh, for the sake of saya hafiz ni. Uh, I, I know you are not from. From Nairobi, then they, we went to the restaurant and they ordered food as much as possible, and then they asked me to pay. I, you will never see that in Spanish Muslim society, never ever. Yeah, nggak nggak model kayak gitu. Jadi, what is the lesson uh, uh, from visiting many countries? I think you can compare the emergence of Muslim in in many countries uh, via different pathways. Yeah. Uh, some of them are struggling. Some some of them are going upward. Some of them are full of prejudice, prejudice, uh, prejudice. Yeah. Once we visit uh, um, Budapest with my wife, and then the only mosque in Budapest is far, far away from the city. And you know what? When we enter the mosque, somebody was snoring upstairs. So you have very small Muslim society and with very low quality of people. So, so that that's that's you know something you can compare different uh, emergence of Muslim in US will be different in the UK. Of course, they are much more advanced due to influx from Pakistani Indian Muslim who are becoming doctor, becoming psychologists, becoming you know informal sector. Spain is in the process of going in that direction. Uh, I think I think in general. People are still divided on learning in formal education or Quran education, but I think now it is much better than probably five, ten years, fifteen years back. Okay, yeah. So if I can say, um, having this privilege, which the children can learn about uh, about religion in madrasa, you said, and about the for with uh, formal education, so. Take a best advantage the much 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 as you can because those two are the the key of the life I think I mean mm -hmm. we need both Absolutely. of them yeah okay Absolutely. yeah thank you thank you very much uh, Mas Ibrahim and I would come back to Brother Ibrahim your professional experience in terms of cultural career let's say you've been also traveling to so many different Islamic countries. Uh, what do you think is the best legacy of Andalusia to the world or, or the culture? Uh, sorry, you're, sorry, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I think that's, that's a very difficult question. It's kind of very broad. Uh, I think, uh, 
the civilization of Al-Andalus gave the world, not only the Muslim Ummah, a lot, uh, like like we were saying earlier. And, and you probably, if you have studied uh, the history of Al-Andalus over the past uh, months, you probably have a more fresh uh, view of, of all the legacy uh, that uh, this great civilization gave the world. But uh, if I want, if if uh, because of my current situation uh, and what we are living today and what we are seeing today in the world, I think one of the, the things that one could highlight the most uh, uh, that is um, more uh, kind of important to, to what we live in today, and in fact, I, I have uh, straight after this, I'm going through a, a kind of an institutional if, iftar in this place called uh, Three Cultures Foundation, where there will be representatives from the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims, and we will have to speak, and they uh, uh, also, the government is uh, will be uh, pub, uh, present there, and they have this um, um, iftar uh, uh, afterwards. Uh, the adhan will be given in public, and uh, obviously, this is space for us to pray. But uh, so that will give you a hint in what I want to say, which is that under the the time of of the uh, of the rule of the Muslims in Spain, there was uh, a coexistence between all religions. And there was a protection for the Christians and the Jewish living uh, in Spain at the time, uh, which is is probably hard to understand for people nowadays. But it's it's, it's such a reality. Is 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 even people that uh, don't want to recognize it, they 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 can find ways to, to not do it because, uh, in fact, uh, what when we were speaking earlier of the Inquisition, and the Inquisition came to Spain. They did not only uh, throw or, or force to convert uh, the Muslims, but the Jewish as well. And uh, and where did the Jewish uh, live? Because they didn't uh, uh, have a land for per se for themselves. Where did they live? They went to Muslim countries. They went to uh, mainly to the north of Africa and to Turkey, which proves it, it's an irrefutable proof that uh, they felt protected under the Muslim rule. And they could uh, carry on with their beliefs, with their worship, with their uh, families, with their education. Uh, uh, whereas, so I think if one was to highlight something that is uh, important in, in the times we live in, is the, the coexistence and the, uh, that, that was shown, lived and exemplary at the time of Alandros. Obviously, there was difficulties, that there was fights, and that it happens in the best families. So you can't expect it not to happen. In, in such a diverse uh, and, and kind of a life community, mm-hmm. but uh, but it is a, a refutable truth, and and I think that would be something that uh, one could highlight from this period of time. Okay, that this one I agree because this is what we we lack of nowadays. I mean, in certain countries, in yeah, world conflict also, the root is uh, there is no coexistence, living among uh, different religions. Mm, okay, thank you, Brother Ibrahim. And Mas Ibrahim, your economy, <laughs> you are the economist, you are the lecturers, you are the researcher. In your perspective, what is the best legacy of Al-Andalus? Ooh, the best legacy of Al-Andalus is, I think, the genetic of people. Um, I don't know. Um, I was in Seville. Actually, I traveled a lot to Granada. So Granada is actually the place uh, Amir Ibrahim was born, right? You were born in Granada. Is it? Yeah. And then uh, there is called there is a place called Triumfo. Is it correct? Tri- Triumfo? Yes. Um, which is park. Uh, park of Triumfo or something like that. And then I don't know his I didn't I did I don't know his story at all. I didn't know his story back then. I don't know his story uh, uh, until now. So, but the feeling when you step on the on the city, you you, you get different atmosphere. Granada is just you know makes you want to cry for no reason. 
you want to create for no reason. So you get it from the bus terminal and just walk through the city and then, uh, and some says, why? Because just under the street that you are walk on, there are a lot of, a lot of, a lot of janazah from the awliya decades ago, yeah, who were killed by the, you know, uh, 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 crusades, well, not crusades, the Abanamanya, uh, the takeover from uh, Reconquista, and that they are everywhere. And and uh, for some reason you feel you you feel sad for for no reason. That's at least that's my, my experience. So whenever I I visit Granada and um, going through uh, toll route A or C twenty nine, whatever the route, I, I remember uh, uh, the feeling is different. So uh, that is that is the yeah. Uh, Buyul is already here, so maybe I, I stop here. That what is the legacy of Andalus? It's the spirit and the genetics, so that the current generation of Muslim is at the top notch of the quality of people. So that's probably the, the short answer. Thank you, Mas Ibrahim. Uh, Mas Afif, could you please do also a spotlight Buyuli, put Buyuli on spotlight. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Waalaikumsalam. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, finally I can join. Very sorry to everybody because I have many promises to everyone to see you. To continue, Mbak Ayu, continue. No, 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 no. Now, now time is yours because I would like to ask you something, Ibu Yuli. The last question, save the best for the last for you. Uh, we already discussed about the strengths, about the history of uh, Islamic <coughs> culture in Andalusia, also Islamic culture in Indonesia. And you have a uh, very, very well acknowledged experience in governance. And this governance is what we as Muslim communities still lack of. I mean, your skill is very valuable. What? What do you think? Where should we start? Where should we start as a Muslim community to unify this this ummah? Because we we couldn't walk alone. We should walk hand in hand. We should cooperate. We have should we should cooperate to each other and coexist and have tolerance and collaborate. And where should we start? What do you think, Ibu Yuli? Thank you so much, Mbak Ayu. Assalamualaikum everybody, Brother Ibrahim and Mas Rahman. So nice to see you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Masya Allah. Masya Allah. Well, particularly, first of all, thank you so much for uh, this uh, program, very good program, a series of program. Thank you, Ibu Dia, for very uh, interesting program and Congratulations that this program may appear every week. And also to Ustaz Rishan Nur Hakim. I believe he's also around now. Yeah. Pak Ustaz. Pak Ustaz. Alhamdulillah, Pak Ustaz. Ibu, and we learn much from Pak Ustaz for his uh, great knowledge about Islamic uh, civilizations in Andalusia. And we understand Andalusia come from Vandalusia when Vandal was there years ago. But are you... I still have maybe about five minutes. I just would like to share with you all that I have special impression with the people in Andalusia. I learned much about Spanish people when firstly I met them into very intensive meeting with them about in 2004 after Atocha bombing. And I accompanied Pa Hasim Muzadi and Pa Din Samsudin Pak Profesor Azumadi Azra, we visited uh, Madrid and we organized meetings because we also expressed, demonstrated our solidarity with uh, Spanish people because we we were also victims of terrorism. And then afterward, both of us acknowledge, recognize that we are plural. We are victims of terrorism. So starting by having such feelings with Spain, with Spanish people, I feel comfortable when my government asked me to be an ambassador in Madrid because I shared also such a feelings 
with many friends in Madrid before when we organized uh, Asia Europe meeting interfaith dialogue where Indonesia and Spain were uh, as sponsor and co-sponsors. And we may at that time chosen uh, uh, the, the theme was about the diversity in un unity in diversity. So this uh, for me, the agreement of the Spanish government to have such a team expressing that they have such a, a tolerance and respect to pluralism. This is good points. And afterward, after I landed in Madrid and I learned more and I visited Toledo, the first capital of a Muslim at that time, I visited all the buildings, I visited all the museums, I met with many people there, so I learned much. That Islamic civilization was rooted years ago, before Cordoba, before uh, Alhambra. We started from Toledo and then move forward. We learned already from Ustad Rishan. But my impression concretely, when Ibrahim introduced me, to uh, city mayor of uh, Almonestra La Real. Yeah, Ibrahim. Almonestra La Real, uh, Mr. Jacinto Vasquez. You know what? Because that village since 1998 organized a festival. A festival to celebrate the Islamic culture that still still maintain well in that tiny region. Even the population 100% are Catholic, but they still, they still have such a memory about the greatness of Islamic civilization in that area. The most, most uh, Almonestra is still there, exists. Even in the 15th century, maybe it changed to a, a church, yeah, but it is used as a cultural center, something like that. And Ibrahim may organize colloquium, painting exhibition, theater in that area, all with Islamic values. And you know what? The people, not only from that village, but people from around Andalusia, including people from adjacent area from Portugal, from Gibraltar, from Morocco, they visited that firstly, that festival only performed flamenco, but now no longer. We have Alcoan recitation and so on because of Ibrahim. According to me, this is reflection of how deep and great and highest tolerance and respect of people, which mostly are non-Muslim, but they have such a feeling to always maintain the great culture of Islam, the great culture of Islamic civilization in that region. And you know what? Now that festival not only involving people in that region, but also from Sevilla, yeah, Pak Ibrahim, yeah, people from Sevilla also involved, become the committee and the participant, not only Spanish people, but also international community. Even at the time was when I proposed to Ibrahim, when Ibrahim and Pak Rahmat told me that they are they were busy with the preparation of the festival, I told them, why don't you invite us? No, Ibu, this is only, uh, well, not a provincial festival, not an international one. I told Ibrahim, no, we should introduce that Islam is not only in the Middle East, but it is also in other part of the world. And then Ibrahim introduced me to the city mayor, Mr. Hasinto. He was surprised and very enthusiastic. Can we organize this provincial festival, become an international one? Yes, you may start with Indonesia. So I brought all the team from the embassy and journalists from Indonesia, about five journalists from Indonesia. And the media coverage in Indonesia was amazing. Almost all media quoting with big pages from Sufi, from a colloquium, uh, all program, cultural program, Islamic cultural program, the three days program, yeah, Ibrahim, 
it was the first time that international participants uh, participate in that festival attended by the visitors that used to be only about 3,000 become about 8,000 people attended for three days. And now I think Ibrahim already developed it even bigger. So just for your information, it was very impressive to me because they are in fact 100% Catholic. But they organized such a festival to nurture the Islamic civilization in that region. That's my special impression. Thank you so much, Ibrahim, again. I'm... Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Ibu Yuli. So, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, forgot to introduce our honor, Ibu Yuli. Uh, she is uh, the ambassador of Spain, I mean, ambassador of Indonesia for Spain. The in the year of 2014, 2014. Until, until 2017 okay yeah uh we still have like eight minutes left um, so before the closing statement from Ustad Trishan I will give one uh opportunity for the audience to ask question if you have question if you don't have then Okay, no problem. If you have question, you can raise your hand and ask question. Uh, raise your hand in the Zoom, <laughs> uh, so I can see um, in the software. If anyone have question, anyone of the participant have question? Sorry, um, I have no. question. <laughs> oh, Mas Indar, okay. Mas Indar, you can ask your question, please. Um, thank you very much uh, for the interesting discussion about the uh, current conditions in Andalusia. So, um, yeah, uh, directly uh, to the point of my questions, um, uh, based on your experience, uh, uh, Brother Ibrahim, uh, um, how, how is, I mean, is there any, uh, uh, like um, in uh, formal educations, uh, uh, there is a subject uh, history. So, um, how uh, it was taught in uh, your uh, country in Spain? Uh, I don't know. Uh, is there any part of uh, um, ancient Muslim uh, in Andalusia as the part of a historic uh, uh, subject? Uh, and 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 the second question is. Um, about the current situations. Uh, I'm now in Aachen in Germany, and um, uh, thanks to the uh, COVID issue, that after that, uh, the city, uh, I mean, the city of Aachen uh, lost us to uh, perform um, it uh, or uh, a praise uh, outside the mosque. So we have already uh, performed it uh, in the last, uh, since the last two years outside the mosque and um, yeah, mashallah and the the, uh, the, uh, the participants of the, the eight prayers uh, read um, um, maybe five, uh, around 5,000 people. And uh, um, uh, how is uh, the uh, situations in uh, your uh, neighborhood? How is the perceptions of the people uh, uh, surrounding uh, the mosque in your country? in your uh, in Seville especially thank you okay. that is questions thank you thank you Mas Indar so I I thought you got the question and the first is about the history is there any narration about Islamic Andalus in your history subject in the formal education and the second is how is the perspective of um, other non yet not yet Muslim community to the mosque let's say so brother Ibrahim please Mashallah. Aachen is the city where Habibi uh, was studied there. Yes, yeah? you're right, you're right, Ibu. Yeah. Yes. And there are numbers of Turkish Muslim is bigger than other cities. Yeah. From Turkey. I think so. Yeah, but uh, Turkish communities are always uh, different. I mean, uh, there is a little bit exclusive uh, in terms of. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. now we are talking about inclusivism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. You got the point. So please, Brother Ibrahim. <laughs> Mashallah, you uh, you cannot believe the the joy uh, and happiness in my heart to see uh, 
Ibu Julie and Pa Ibrahim together in the same screen. It makes me to feel really close to them. You don't understand how important uh, this lady has been in my life and how much uh, she done for us here in, in Seville and for Islam. Um, uh, I've met many, many ambassadors over my life. Been very uh, fortunate to to meet many, but none, none like Ibu Julie. She's because she uh, she was a she was a she was a, a a woman of Allah. She she reminded me of Khadija, the the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She's a very very a wonderful woman. Mashallah, she's incredible, and Mashallah, I'm really happy to see her again today tonight. Um, and thank you for for getting us all together and, and to be able to share this uh it's it's really mashallah really wonderful but uh going back to the to the question uh there is of course uh, uh a little bit of uh history told about the uh islam in in spain but uh but certainly not enough uh if you if you think about it the muslims were um here for a period of uh almost 800 years and uh, and uh, the talk about the Muslims in Spain, uh, it's only like uh, half of a page in the textbook uh, of history. Um, so it's it's kind of looked as as uh, or the general perception is that the Muslims came uh, and then we reconquered back. Uh, and it, yes, it took us eight hundred years, but we reconquered. But very little of uh, highlighting or understanding the the beauty and and making it an, our, our own history right but there is on the other side there is a recent uh kind of reconciliation with our own history a reconciliation in terms of seeing that everything that happened in the landers were done by andalusians by people of the land i mean you cannot be of any other place if your uh grand your father grandfather great great grandfather were from Andalus. You were from here, and so everything that developed, uh, all these wonderful things that we know that developed in Al-Andalus in terms of science, and in terms of religion, in terms of uh, philosophy, all of these things were developed here. So there, there is uh, uh, an understanding, the people are gathering that uh, reconciliation with our own history, which I think is very positive. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you a very little uh, short story. When uh, my father-in-law, uh, may he rest in peace, when um, he used to always tell me, uh, you don't think that you, the, the Arabs, build the Alhambra. We, the people of Granada, build the Alhambra. He was not Muslim. But uh, that is the kind of thought process that needs to happen, is for people to understand that there were not these Arabs that came in here, uh, occupied the land, lived for a little bit, and then we threw them away. It was nothing like that. There was actually... Uh, studies uh, um, commissioned by Franco, by the way, to understand the process of uh, uh, how Islam is spread so quickly in Spain. And it, it comes to the conclusion and the proof that most of the people in the Spain at the time actually converted to Islam. There was a very, very gradual conversion of people to, to Islam, and that's what made it spread so long. There's many reasons for it, like the oppression they had by the previous kings, uh, how they were Unitarian Christians and, and therefore they understood that uh, they had a sense of Tawheed, of understanding that uh, there was a, a coming prophet. Uh, and so all of these things made it very easy for people to kind of accept Islam. And, and obviously it came like it did spread in, uh, in, in Southeast Asia by, by trade and by the will of people. It, it was not by the sword. It was like very, very handful of people compared to the population of Spain. But anyway, uh, coming back to your question, yes, there is obviously uh, a little bit taught, but uh, certainly not enough for for the grandiousness of it. But it is changing towards there being more, inshallah. And uh, and to to your second question in, in regards of our neighbors, we again going back to the class that we were having yesterday before iftar, we were called again and again and again as it is in the sunnah to take care of your brothers. And there was a hadith told by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, uh, Jibril was so emphasizing in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to, to take care of his neighbors, yeah. your close neighbors, your distant neighbors, your distant neighbors, so much that he said 
that I thought they would they would uh, become inheritors. They would they would have a right on my inheritance. Allah put so much emphasis on the care of the neighbors that I thought for that the Prophet ﷺ thought for a minute that maybe they will be uh, allowed to take inheritance from from him. That your neighbors, which obviously didn't happen, but for, so for us the relationship with the neighbors is very important. Uh, like we were saying earlier, yesterday we celebrated the twenty seventh night. Uh, and that's the mosque is open for the whole night. And as you saw in the pictures that Pat Ibrahim was displaying uh, the top floor and the t second floor uh, uh, um, by local neighbors, they're not Muslims. So we have to be very careful to keep the, uh, the, the sound very quiet and to remind people that when they go outside of the mosque, do not speak at the door, do not sit in the uh, entrance of the neighbors. Uh, uh, but we have, alhamdulillah, a very good relationship with them in particular and with the city in general. And and we do do the the Eid al Fitra uh, in the park, alhamdulillah. So uh, we will be we have permission to do it in the park, uh, like a big musalla outside. Um, and we gather with other different uh, mosques and communities from the city, which is also very wonderful. And uh, yeah, and we're really looking forward to that, uh, inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. inshallah, alhamdulillah. Uh, this very impressive uh, answer, especially about the the interaction with the neighbor. I mean, when people try to avoid conflict, you try to build a trust with your neighbor uh, by doing the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Okay, mm, so thank you, Brother Ibrahim, Mas Ibrahim, and Ibu Yuli. Uh, now, please welcome uh, Ustaz Trishan. Uh, he is our teacher uh, during this Ramadan uh, who told us a lot about the history of Al-Andalus. And so, Assalamualaikum Ustaz Rishan. Um, he will give us the conclusion yeah. because he already op opened uh -huh. the lecture. Now you should close also the lecture, Ustaz Rishan. <laughs> so please wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Yossi, and uh, also Mas Ibrahim and Mr. Ibrahim, and also Ibu Yuli. <clears throat> uh, uh, I will say uh, Islam is the mercy for universe. Yeah, Islam is rahmatan lil alamin. In Arabic, we say it. Uh, those uh, Islamic preaching must contain the values of mercy. And also Islam contains enlightening values, opening a straight path, uh, defend, defending the weak and freeing people from being slaves to the world to become slaves to the creator of the world. Uh, in Ibad uh, al-Ibad, ila Ibad Rabbil Ibad. So I will close uh, this uh, uh, my lecture uh, with uh, Surah Al-Fat. Al-Fat. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Al-Rajim. Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina liyaghfira laka Allahu ma taqaddama min zambika wa ma taakhar wa yutimma ni'matahu alayka wa yahdiyaka sirata mustaqima. Indeed, we have granted you a clear uh, triumph of Prophet so that Allah may forgive you for your past and future shortcomings, perfect his before upon you, guide you along the straight path. Uh, I mean, uh, Islam is coming not for invasion. And uh, as we read, Tariq bin Ziyad come to Andalus, it's not, not for, for invasion, but uh, uh, to uh, bring the da'wah Islam. To, to give the spirit of the of Islam, open the mind and uh, like uh, we said, uh, freeing people uh, like this. So uh, the spirit is from Al-Fatah. And uh, the second uh, surah is uh, from Al-Imran 140. وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِهِ And the translate is these days so of varying condition, we alternate among the people so that Allah may make evident those who believe 
and may take to himself from among you martyrs. And Allah doesn't like the wrongdoers. Sadaqallahu uh, alazim. Thank you very much. And uh, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, uh, Ustaz Rishan, for the conclusion. So if I may conclude from all of you, from Brother Ibrahim, from Mas Ibrahim, from Ibu Yuli, and from Ustaz Rishan, the strong message of the Islamic community of an Andalus is tolerance, inclusivity, the mercy of Islam, and uh, the unity in diversity, and also the last... Uh, Rule of thumb of Mas Ibrahim, if you're still in Europe, first thing first is go to Hajj, and the second is visit Granada and Seville to meet Brother Ibrahim. Without Brother Ibrahim, your Granada visit is nothing, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, I would like but to you think, Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah. I have a question, Yossi, because you mentioned about, don't forget, to, if we are living in Germany or in Europe, we have to visit Spain, and especially uh, see Brother Ibrahim. Now I'm. I would like. Of course, I have been in Spain, and I would like to visit Spain. And and not only for me, but uh, for other participants also, and also people, especially Muslim Indonesian Muslim community in Germany. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm asking to if Brother Ibrahim, is there any Islamic info service in Islam in Spain, which is we can uh, uh, access in, in internet like a homepage? Because I'm living in Germany since more than sixteen years, and if I talk about Islam uh, to to my colleagues, especially non-Muslim or Muslim but not practical, and they didn't know about the history of Islam in Spain. And this is very maybe useful if um, you can share to us, and I can also spread to to my 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 friends or our community here. And of course, if I'm looking forward to maybe uh, together we are going to Spain. You see, maybe from from community from from Frankfurt or from Germany. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Uh, so, Brother Ibrahim, do you have maybe a media or website to be able share, to be shared? Of course, we have the the Civil Moss uh, Foundation website, um, um, but it, it doesn't have much about the history. But um, um, yeah, uh, it has a lot about the activities that we do and everything like that. Obviously, our contact details. Um, yes, uh, do uh, uh, what I can do is uh, if they do contact us, um, uh, I will uh, if if they are coming to London, I can put them in contact with uh, wonderful tour guides like uh, our brother Yasin who can uh, take them around and then they will ha have uh, the proper like vision and, uh, of the history and they will take them to all the right places, inshallah. So uh, what I, I can do, I don't know if I can give you the uh, details here. Shall I just yes. put the website or? Yeah, you can uh, uh, vale. share to me or in the chat box anytime. Yeah, for sure, Mbak. Uh, our delegation from Majlis Ulama Indonesia is planning to visit Andalusia soon after Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And actually, I've asked already Professor Dr. Uh, Sudarnoto Abdul Hakim, the, uh, our senior, to join our uh, Zoom today to introduce him to Brother Ibrahim. Because once it is an uh, actual visit will be organized by Majlis Ulama, Pak Sudarnoto will be there. Ibrahim, you know Pak Sudarnoto because... He was our executive director in CDCC with Prof. Din Samsudin. You met him already. So okay. he will be uh, yeah, chair of our delegation to Andalusia after Ramadan. Insyaallah we will contact you soon. But I cannot go. Uh, maybe oh. Ambassador Bunyan will go. Okay. Mashallah, we really, really look forward to, to welcome the delegation. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Ibijit. Thank you. It's very nice networking uh, event. I love to have it. <laughs> so, brother and sister, you can see in the chat box that Brother Ibrahim already uh, wrote um, mesquitadesevilla.com and at mesquitasevilla in all social media. And uh, I would like to invite all of you for our recommendation to please open your camera and please, uh, Mas Afif, you can take down the um, screen. But yeah, actually, MUI planning because of this program. Yes. 
Uh, oh, very well. Yes. Masya Allah. 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 Thank you again, Ibu Dia. Thank you again. Thank you, Ibu Yuli. Thank we you, are Ibu very Yuli. thankful for Ibu your Yuli. Help. Without your help, so we cannot do this. Yes, so, so. you're right. Yeah. So I please, Ibu Yuli. I hope you still manage the electricity there because we would like to have a picture together to all our participants. Uh, please open up your camera. I think it could be also an evidence for our MUI brother and sister about the enthusiasm of our uh, talk show in Ramadan. Um, Mas Afif, I think you can also uh, stop the, how can I say it, let's see, yeah. So one of them, uh, is it possible to all of you to open up the camera? I think, okay. Then okay, we can we can uh, start to take a screenshot. Uh, Maybe a few of them are preparing for iftar, you see. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So <laughs> they are listening while cooking. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Yeah, oh, once again. One, two, three. Give your best smile. Yeah. Thank you so much. So uh, this photo session is uh, the end of, of our talk show uh, Ramadan. Uh, again, I would like to thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you, for Brother Ibrahim, for Mas Ibrahim, for Ibu Yuli, Ustaz Trishan, uh, Sister Diah, Mas Afif, uh, Mas Ina, uh, Mbak Ima, <laughs> the wife of uh, uh, Ustaz Trishan. Thank you very much for all your participation, for your positive energy, and I hope uh, we got the decree of Laylatul Qadar in this month on Ramadan. And barakallahu uh, fiq. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hey, Waalaikumsalam with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, today talk show is also streamed in the YouTube channel of PCIM German Raya, so you can also replay our 